I'm going to be going over a paper called Metacorpophalangeal Length Changes in Humans During Adulthood, a Longitudinal Study. Already, by the title, you can get excited because it's saying that the hand bones can increase in length during adulthood. Distal and middle phalanges continue to in increase significantly in length. Proximal phalanges constitute a transition zone of little change and metacarpals uniformly de decrease in length. We will see why that is later. Males change more, lose more than some rooms, gain more than others. For females, this is significant because males have more muscle. That means that the change is possible due to mechanical loading. Progressive elongation was greatest in the distal phalanges where opposition, a position around the distal aspect, tufting, is not constrained by a joint or epiphysis. Loss of bone length in the metacarpals by subcontral resorption is consistent with do documented reductions in activity levels and grip strength range, as well as the diminished joint spaces, which alter loader than the joints. So again, they're saying that mechanical loading can possibly influence this process. And um, the reason why the, the, the ends of the fingers can grow more significantly is because the, the fingers don't have articular cartilage at the end, so it's possible to grow via a, a positional deposition on the longitudinal ends of the bone. It is now a well-recognized phenomenon. The bone growth continues, albeit slowly, throughout life. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean length, but that's a very exciting sentence to me. Um, the nature of change in a given system is not a foregone conclusion, but depends on the interdependence of the bone's anatomical structure and the forces placed upon it. And we can also those forces be a mechanical loading. Longi longitudinal growth study. So this, so what's significant about this is that this is a longitudinal study, which makes it more exciting because some, some other studies, they compare people of different ages and stuff like that, which is not accurate. But so this, this is a longitudinal study. It doesn't have that issue, so it's more accurate. The percent sexual, sexual dimorphism averages 11.7% of the earlier age grade and increases to 12.2% of the old age. So the fact that there is sexual dimorphism means that we can possibly alter these, these, um, these bone lengths via either hormones or via mechanical loading since males generally have more muscle mass and they are more affected by mechanical loading. They form more effect. The average time span between hand wrist radiograph is 33.5 years. So this is a long time longitudinal studies. The distal and middle phalanges, phalanges invariably show an increase continuing elongation during adulthood. Okay. Here is the degree of elongation that occurs. Um, this is a distal phalanges, middle phalanges, proximal phalanges, and metacarpals. Um, so the, you can see this 22.9 to 24, that is, that is huge. But the thing is that these bones are, are very small bones. So when, um, so apositional growth and endochondral articular cartilage notification occurs at the longitudinal ends of the bones. So it depends on what the size already is. So a very large bone like the femur or tibia. Um, if this process occurs, it won't be as large a percentage as it does as, as on a smaller bone. So but the, these are huge. Um, so it is possible that this could occur out, out of femur or tibia site, but these two processes, either um, longitudinal deposition on the, the, the ends of the bones or articular cartilage and ossification, the, the percentage won't be as large as it is for a smaller bone like a flange. So you can see the, the distal flange, it, huge, huge increases, 19 to 19.6, 17.2 to 17.9. That, that would be a, a huge increase in height if it happened to the tibia of fibula. Um, for the middle flange, 24.4 to 24.8, not, not quite as dramatic, but still pretty dramatic. Um, proximal flange, um, pretty much no, no change, but still, some some slight decrease, some some an increase, and then metacarpals all all somehow decrease. So we'll look into that later. 
It might be argued that the elongation of the distal and middle phalanges occurred because some late adolescent growth was captured. So they considered that there was residual growth and they ruled that out. Bone size, like other mineralized tissues, can only change by opposition or re resorption of the surface. So they're, so they're, they're, they're kind of saying what, what I'm saying. But I, I, I disagree that they, it, can, it can be only changed. I think there are other possibilities. But I definitely think these two changes can increase bone length. Um, in the distal and middle phalanges, the shorter bones gain more length during adulthood. And again, I explain that's why. It's because articular articulation changes more percentage on shorter length bone because it occurs in the longitudinal ends and doesn't really affect the whole length of the bone. Um, shorter bones increase more the, during adulthood than larger bones within each row of bone in the same hand. And again, this makes it more likely that the, the change is due to articular cartilage intercausal ossification. Okay, here. In so-called flat bones with both an inner and outer cortical plate, such as a cal calvaria, and the calvaria is on the, the top of your head. So, so they're pointing out that there's two study, that there's studies that show that cal calvaria increases in size via length. So adults definitely increase in height over time via the calvaria because that's at the top of the bone. But it'll be a very, very slight increase. A, po a position of the two surfaces increases bone thickness. Continued cavalier bone growth has been documented in both cross-sectional and serial studies of adults. So everyone definitely grows taller, but it's just a very small process. Um, look, look, so th this picture shows you um, a, a drawing of how much the bone changes in size via aging. Um, so a res representative sex example, male 20 and 54 years of age with slight increase in several phalanges and shortening of the metacarpal. So is, you can't really see very much, but you, you can kind of see here, here, here. So, but B, this is a, a dramatic increase. Um, look at the, the increase at the end. So that would be a huge increase in bone size and length via age but unfortunately some shortening in the metacarpals. But um, it's, it could be possible to avert that with mechanical loading if we do it in the right way. Um, yeah, overt loss of metacarpal lengths at the proximal surfaces. Um, here's another male, um, dramatic loss of metacarpals, but also dramatic bone sh shape increase. A male with increase in several phalangeal lengths and shortening of the metacarpals due to resorption of the distal subcondocytes. So hopefully with mechanical loading we can, or hormones or, or something, we could revert this to resorption. And there is some evidence that possibly HGHB can be used to make um, this process go faster, but obviously, you know, most people don't have access to HGH. Um, okay. Here you can see how dramatic the change is. It's greater in males and females and males. Um, there's a hormonal factor, yes, but also males have more mechanical loading than females. Um, the distal phalanges which ex exhibit appreciable increase are in unique and not being constrained distally by a joint or epiphysis. So you can see here, these are the distal phalanges. So they don't have joint or epiphysis to constrain their growth so they can grow via a position, a position potentially on un, an unlimited amount. Um, age prog progressive deposition at or around the distal aspect tufting readily accounts for the growth of the bone. So they're saying that it's likely due to apositional growth. I think there's other methods, but in this case, it's probably this method. Um, cumulative effects of mechanical stress with committed subcontral resorption may account for the size diminutions in the metacarpals. So in this case, they're saying that possibly mechanical stress resulted in this subcontral resorption. So we ideally we want to study the exercises that best um, induce lengthening of the various bones and not cause any shortening. 
males with greater grip strength exhibit more change in females. So males tend to have greater mechanical loading on the bones. Um, there's more also a radial to ulnar gradient and pinch force. So it, the, what they're saying is that, you know, the, how, how loading occurs may, uh, may affect what um, bones shorten and lengthen. And that's the idea. We want to find out the best exercises to lengthen the bones. Um, males change more during adulthood. That is, males exhibit greater increases in the distal and middle phalanges and greater decreases in the metacarpals. So both the decreases and increases are likely influenced by mechanical loading. Um, individuals with the shortest bones at early adulthood change the most thereafter. Subjects with the longest phalanges exhibited essentially no change. Um, again, that could be because um, articular cartilage in endochondrophil esification or a positional growth of the longitudinal ends is a percentage, is a smaller percentage be, for already long bones. Longer bones lose the most with age while the shorter bones were virtually unchanged. Most growth of the diaphyseal bones occurs at the meta metaphysis and therefore thereby ceases with fusion of the diaphysis epiphysis during adolescence. Sub subsequent modeling and remodeling at the control bone interface is often over overlooked. So we'd idea ideally f find a way how to manipulate this modeling, this modeling re remodeling process of the subchondral bone interface. This latter contribution to overall size, however, can however be avert as in growth between major articular cartilage, such as in the proximal and distal femur. Um, so they're, again, they're saying that it's possible to possibly change the size and, and shape of the femur um, via this process. But again, it's gonna be slower relative because those bones are, are huge relative to the finger bones, which are smaller. And documenting, modeling and remodeling throughout adulthood, a bone at the cartilage bone interface. Cartilage is pressure adapted. And as noted, when cartilage thickness exceeds the critical dimensions that limit nutrition by diffusion, the cartilage cells hypertrophy and degenerate. The spaces become vac vascularized and osteoblasts develop to initiate endochondral bone formation in the midst of articu the articular cartilage. So again, articular cartilage, endochondral ossification. So, so when cartilage thickness exceeds the critical dimension. So basically, what to initiate this process, we'd want to initiate cartilage growth. So we want to figure out how best to grow the cartilage to initiate the process. Slow progressive lengthening may then be a normal correlate of aging. And what we see in acromegaly is that this process occurs faster. So we can either make it faster via um, hormones or by mechanical loading. Arti with aging, however, articular cartilage undergoes histopomorphic changes which lessen its resistance to biomechanical demands. Joint spaces decrease with age which changes the fine geometry of joints and thereby the loading patterns and force levels of the cartilage. The, these may account for the net resorption changes seen here in the metacarpals, particularly males. So one way to prevent the resorption is to prevent the joint spaces decreases with age. So, so this could be like uh, uh, arthritic, arthritic changes or cartilage integration. So we want the cartilage thickness to ex to exceed the critical dimensions. We won't want the, the cartilage to generate. So what we want to do to initiate the good process, the lengthening, it would be to make the cartilage thicker. We don't want it to be thinner because that seems to be associated with the metacar metacarpal decreasing in size via age. We want the cartilage bigger, not smaller. Reduction in jo joy spaces commonly observed with aging. And the consequence of this is increased congruity between the articular surfaces is to increase the loading of previously unloaded regions of the joint and increase the forces on the joint under fully loading conditions. There's a, they're saying that the shortening of the joint is likely due to the age 
age-related reduction in joint space. Um, hand bones are not weight pain in the usual sense. They certainly are not free of mechanical stresses and functional demands in, co in combination with the physiological demands of catalysm, calcium metabolism, which change dramatically through it, uh, throughout adulthood, may well be the primary factors of these changes. So I think this is a very, ex I, when I saw I was blown away by it, um, but yeah, so this study pre pretty much proves that mechanical loading can increase bone bone length. We just have to figure out the best way to do it. Um, and also, this method is definitely in influenced by hormones such as HGH. So if there's um, a, 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 another other hormones that work similarly to HGH, uh, it should also initiate the same process. So I think this is a very exciting study, which um, everyone who wants to go taller should definitely use insight as proof that it is possible.